If you watched my previous screencast on RxVT, you'll already know that it's a bare bones terminal window by design. You see, instead of cramming the terminal with features that most people will never use, RxVT instead maintains a minimal set of features and allows you to add additional functionality via extensions. In this second and final screencast on RxVT, I'm going to show you where to discover RxVT extensions and of course, how to install and configure them. So without any further ado, let's get started. So just like last time, I'm running Ubuntu inside of a virtual machine here. And the reason why I do that is so that any settings I've applied to my personal computer won't impact the tutorial. Once you're up and running in your system, the first thing you'll want to do, obviously, is choose an extension to install. And to make that task easier, I've put together a document that contains a list of popular, actively maintained RxPT extensions and their download links. You can find a link to this document on screen or in the description. And because this is a GitHub repository, anyone can propose updates to the document. So if you have anything to contribute, be that a grammar fix, an additional extension, whatever, please feel free to propose an edit on GitHub. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be installing this full screen extension, which does what you might expect. It makes it possible to enter full screen mode when you press a certain shortcut. You can use the steps I apply here to install the full screen extension to any other extension on this list. All you need to do essentially is replace full screen with the extension that you want to install. Now, before I actually jump in, I just want to mention that RxVT extensions are written in a programming language called Perl and are typically distributed as a single Perl source file. For instance, if I open the source code for the full screen extension in a new tab, you can see that firstly, it's a single file and secondly, it's a Perl script. Once you've decided on an extension to install, the first step is to simply download the Perl script file for that extension into a special extensions directory that RxVT automatically looks for extensions in. The location of this extensions directory is usually slash user slash lib slash urxvt slash Perl. Okay, now you understand that RxVT extensions are very simply just Perl script files and that you must download them to a specific directory, this directory, let's actually download the full screen extension. What I recommend you do is use this GitHub document I put together and find the from source link for the extension that you want to install. In my case, I'm going to get the link for the full screen extension. Right click on that link and click on something like copy link location. The text might be different depending on your browser. Alternatively, you could open the source file in a new tab and copy the link from the address bar. This way you get to preview the script before you download it. Once you've got that link copied to your clipboard, head over to the terminal and use a command like wget to download the file at the location you just copied to your clipboard. You may very well find that this directory is protected and therefore gets a permissions error. So what I recommend you do is rerun that command using sudo. Enter your password. And now if you list the files within this directory, you should see that the full screen script file has been downloaded. And that's pretty much it in terms of downloading an extension. The only other thing I'll add is that for the Arch Linux users among you, you can actually download RxVT extensions with a single command using an AUR helper like Yahoot. As you can see, if I head back to the browser, there's an additional link for an AUR repository. If you head here, you can see the AUR repository for the full screen extension. The repository is called urxvt fullscreen If I was on Arch Linux and if I had Yaroot installed, I could have typed something like Yaroot-s and then the name of the repository, which is of course urxvt full screen Running this command would essentially do everything that we've just done manually, automatically. So if you're running Arch Linux, you might as well take advantage of it. So now we've downloaded the full screen extension. However, our XVT won't actually load the extension until we explicitly tell it to. So let's do that now. To enable an extension, you basically want to go to the xresources.file I introduced you to in the previous screencast and open it using an editor. So I'm currently somewhere deep inside of the root directory. So I'm going to have to refer to the xresources file by its full path. It's in the home directory. So I'm going to write tilde forward slash and then the name of the file 
.x resources. At the bottom, I'm going to create a new resource called urxvtperl ext common followed by a colon, followed by a space. The value for this resource should be a comma delimited list of Perl extensions to load. In our case, we'll want to specify the full screen extension, but like I say, it's comma delimited. So if you wanted to, for example, install the resize font extension alongside the full screen extension, you'd place a comma and then the name of the extension resize dash font. Basically, what you're referring to here is the name of the script file you downloaded. If I quit out of the eye, you can see that the file name is full screen. So that's why I refer to it inside of the X resources file as full screen and not for instance, uh, urxvt dash full screen, which is another name we saw this extension referred to as. As a general sort of convention, you'll find the repositories and packages for our XVT extensions to be prefixed with urxvt dash. What follows that prefix is usually what you want to write here. But to be honest, the sanest way to find out what to write here in terms of specifying the extension is to just look at the documentation. In addition to the install links, in every case there's a link to some kind of documentation, usually the Arch Wiki. If you click this link, it'll take you straight to the full screen section. As you can see, here's the, the, res oh, excuse me, here's the resource that we just declared and here's the extension name, full screen. That being said, if I did rename that script file to something like foobar, I would have to refer to it as foobar here. I couldn't still refer to it as full screen because it is based on the file name. Just to recap before we go any further, at this point, we've downloaded and loaded the full screen extension. However, true to the RxVT philosophy, the full screen extension isn't going to make an assumption about what shortcut you want to press to trigger full screen mode. What that means is that as it stands, this extension is loaded, but there's no way to actually trigger it. There's no way to actually make the terminal window full screen, despite having downloaded and enabled the extension. What I would quite like to do is make it so that when I press F11, the terminal window goes into full screen mode. So what I need to do is explicitly tell RxVT, hey, when F11 is pressed, make the terminal window full screen, and doing that is easy. All I need to do is go back to the X resources file and create a custom key binding for the F11 key. This resource on the left hand side here isn't specific to the full screen extension, you could bind this F11 key to anything, but in our case, we'll bind it to Perl colon full screen colon switch. Now, if I exit the I and then reload the X resources file using the XRDB command, remember we spoke about this in the previous screencast, and then finally restart the terminal window itself. Now, hopefully when I press F11, crap. All right, so that was rubbish. But let's look at it as an opportunity. Now I'll show you how I will debug this problem. So first of all, I want to look at the documentation and just make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, I'm just gonna double check that I've typed everything correctly. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Um, there's also nothing additional that I've missed. Next, let me look at the troubleshooting section and see if there's anything that might be of relevance to my problem. Uh, I see something that looks relevant here key combinations do not work. Uh, let's look at what this link's about. Uh, right away, this is taking me to the Vim wiki, which is probably not relevant here. Um, the other thing, I'm, I've got a suspicion that maybe the reason why I'm getting this error, or rather why nothing's happening is because maybe the F11 key is reserved by the system somehow. So let me try binding this to something like control delete. And then what I'll do is just real quick, uh, reload the X, uh, sorry, reload the X resources file, reload the terminal and see now if I press control and delete if that fixes it. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, what I'll do next is go to the source file. And what I want to do is go to the repository for this source file. So this here is the actual username and repository on GitHub. So if I navigate there, um, I can find the GitHub repo and I want to look and see if anybody else is having the same issue on GitHub. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, I don't see anything. Oh, hold on a second. Look at this. We see that we have a dependency on WM CTRL. 
perhaps that isn't pre-installed on Ubuntu and it would make sense, right? Because I've used this extension on Arch Linux before, it would make sense that the repository or the package comes with this dependency bundled with it. So what I'll try doing is writing sudo app-get install wmctrl. So it looks like it's not pre-installed. Now, if I press control delete, which is the key binding, I just bound the full screen function to, now it works. Let's quickly go back to the X resources file. I wanna make this F11 again. Reload everything, reload everything. Now, this time, ready for the grand reveal? When I press F11, yes, the terminal window goes full screen. Awesome. So yeah, that's actually, I don't know if you guys appreciate that. Um, I'm very close to going back and re-recording the video at this point, but I do think that's kind of instructive. One thing I was planning on mentioning before I got distracted essentially is, you know, how did I know what to write here? You know, I referred to this resource and I knew to write uh, Perl colon full screen colon switch. Well, I've kind of answered that question already. If you look at the readme for the script, you can see firstly some example usage. Furthermore, if you look at the actual source file itself, you can see some usage at the top here. Uh, if you go to the Arch Wiki page for this resource, uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, if you go to the Arch Wiki page for this extension, you can see some example usage here. Yet another way I could have learned how to use this extension in the first place is to look at somebody else's dot files. I've had mine open in a tab here for a while. Here's my X resources file. It could just as well be somebody else's. You can see that I'm referring to the full screen extension here and I'm binding it here as well. I've already done this on my personal system. And if I was learning how to use a new extension, I would use any of those resources I just mentioned. Or if I was really stuck, I'd look at somebody else's dot files and see what they're doing. If you go to my GitHub profile, for instance, just as an example and see the repositories that I've starred, you'll see that I'm always using people's dot files as learning resources when it comes to writing and configuring Unix software. And you know what guys, that's pretty much it in terms of stalling an RX VT extension. I got thrown a curveball towards the end there and I hope you appreciate my solving it in real time instead of re-recording the video. It really isn't because I'm lazy, I'm more than willing to go back and re-record it. However, I do actually think that might be instructive. So please let me know what you think about that in the YouTube comments down below. All I really want to add at this point, just to wrap up, is that if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me in a YouTube comment on this video. You can also find help in the RxVT subreddit if I can find that real quick. Here's a link in the awesome RxVT repository I mentioned throughout this video. As you can see, here's a link to the RxVT subreddit. If you ask a question there, you usually get an answer within a day or so. Um, furthermore, if you're still having trouble, try asking on Unix Stack Exchange. This community is a bit more formal, but again, provided you ask a clear, focused question, you're very likely to get an answer within a day or so. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you found these RxVT screencasts useful. Please remember to like the video if you liked it and to subscribe if you want to see more screencasts.